today, I would like to be asking a question. And now this is my question. But have you ever asked yourself the reason why you are scared of death? Have you ever asked yourself? Now, so many people, they find themselves in a kind of situation that somebody will come to them and say, See, I had a vision. I had a revelation. I saw this. I saw that. You are going to die. You are going to die. This is going to happen. And then people become unstable because of that kind of prophecy or revelation. Now, the question is, in reality, should a child of God be scared of death? You might be wondering that, ah, ah, what is this, what is this boy saying? Who wants to die? Ah, me, I don't want to die, eh? Die, death, take Ah, no, no, not this time. Ah, no, no, no. Even if I'm going to die, I still want to enjoy life. I want to give birth, I want to get married. I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that. Yes, you are right. But if truly you are a child of God, if truly you have given your life to Christ, if truly you are living for him, then you shouldn't be scared of death. You see, death is a transporter that transports man from the physical realm into the spiritual realm. You see, when all things are failed, are you getting it? Maybe you find yourself in a very terrible accident. Your head, your hand, your intestines, everything scattered. Are you getting it? And then, People look at you and they can no longer hold it again. They, some of them will run away, some of them will bring out their phone and begin to camera you and begin to share you on social media. By the time you find yourself in such a situation and the doctors come and say, no, 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 this one cannot survive it. And the nurses come and say, no, the surgery and the technician, hey, call them whatever medical partner you call them. They will come and say, no, 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 this one cannot survive. Are you getting it? Your family will look at you and they will, they will begin to cry. Your children, your loved ones, everybody will forsake you. The only one that will remain with you is Mr. D, which is death. Death will now come and show up and rescue you out of that situation. Then you will now discover that you become two. One is lying down battered and scattered due to the accident or something that happened. Are you getting it? Now you will have the opportunity to be taken by the transporter out of that situation. And let me tell you one thing. You see when you are in pain, for example, you had an accident and then you are bleeding, maybe your hand has cut off or your leg has cut off or something has happened to you, but you are not dead yet. You are going to be feeling a very kind of severe pains. Do you know that immediately Mr. Death comes like this and grabs you out of that body. All your pains, the first thing that is going to be gone, your pains will disappear. All those pains, you will not feel it anymore. Death is the only one that can come and do that for you. Nobody can do it. Now. Talking about death, why am I so much in love with death? Why do I love death? Why am I always proclaiming death? Because I was, there was a woman that she's tired of me. She used to tell me that I am not a child. That my mother that gave her to me, she has given back to nonsense. Do you know the reason why? Because she saw the way I love death and I talk about death almost every day. Anytime I'm with her like this, I will always make her to remember that by the time you, you I, will, I, will, I will say jokingly that by the time I go to where the elderly ones are going and she will like, shut up your mouth, you this small boy, where do you want to go? Why do you always say nonsense? And me, I will like, I was like, death is a very good man and death is very faithful. As you are looking at death, death will take you to wherever you have written in your passport. I'm telling you. Death is a pilot that is very faithful and very sincere. And you know, in the in the journey of death, death cannot have accident. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like plane crash or ship capsizing. No, he will take you to your destination and then come back. It's as simple as that. But do you know the reason why you are afraid of death? I know you don't know, but let me tell you. The reason why you are afraid of death is because you don't know where you are going to after your death. That's just it. You see. When I read through my Bible, when I check the scriptures and I begin to bring out facts of what God has prepared for those that love God, what God has put in place for those that are his children, what God has prepared for as many that died faithfully, what God has prepared for those 
that give up everything just to be faithful and to follow God. My dear, I cannot but hate this present world. Give me hundred million dollars. Give me one trillion dollars. There is nothing you can give me on earth. There is nothing I can have on earth that can be compared to the glory that is ahead. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it come to the mind of man or to the brain of man or to their heart what God has prepared for them that love them. Are you getting it? He says in the place that the glory of the latter days shall be greater than the former. Are you getting it? So, with this kind of understanding, how will I be afraid of death? No. No, come to think of it, having this kind of mentality, having this kind of confidence, you know, what God has done, what he has prepared, not that he's about to prepare it, not that he's just doing it, he has perfected everything. All I need is for me to be faithful, to be focused, to be righteous, and after the whole thing is over, he will welcome me to his kingdom. Now, the question is, how do you expect me? To not be afraid, to be scared, to not say the only thing that has the capability to take me to where my father has prepared, I will not take him as an enemy. No, that is my friend. That is your friend too, because he's the one that will take you to that place. Do you know how long, how many years we have been waiting for rapture? This is 2024 years, and rapture has not taken place. But death is busy taking some people to that place that Raptor is about to take us to. Are you not thinking about it? The place that death is taking people to, the saints, the children of God that die, death is taking them to that same paradise Raptor is coming to take us to. Now, a lot of people have backslidden, a lot of people have given up on God, a lot of people have, have frustrated already because Rapture has not taken place. And so many people have lost their focus. So many people have thought it is not real. And so many people have fallen away. Because they said rapture is not real. For the past 2024 years, we have been waiting. Are you getting it? But can you count the number of people that has died since the restoration and the ascension of Jesus Christ? Can you count it? Of course not. And you can be one of them. As you are watching this video, you might not be able to see another video before you die. As I'm doing this video, I might not have the opportunity to upload this video before I die. Are you getting it? Now, if I upload this video and you are watching it, there is no assurance that I will upload another video before I die. Are you getting it? So, death is very significant, very faithful, very fast, very sharp in doing it. So, it is left for you now to not determine yourself that, oh, where will this death take me to? That's the most, that's the most dangerous aspect of it. Are you getting it? Because immediately you have the confidence that you are a child of God. And if you die, you are not dying wasted. You are not, you know? When you have the confidence that, oh, as I'm dying, I'm going somewhere. I have a place I'm going to. Then you will see that when you are walking, when you are doing things, when you fall into any kind of either temptation or trial, you will easily come out victoriously because you have the confidence that, oh, I have a place I'm going to. There is a place waiting for me. And then you see this hymn. Many people, they thought that that hymn is meant for burial ceremony. No, it's a hymn. These hymns. That, that you normally sing in, in burial ceremony. They are hymns actually for the children of God that have the mindset of heaven. These are hymns you should sing. You see, me, I love it. But I will sing one of them in Yoruba, one or two. You see, one of them is Jerusalem turn. That song is talking about the new Jerusalem. Oh. Can you, it's not this Jerusalem in Israel, not this one in Israel presently. As in the new Jerusalem, the place that Christ has prepared for those that love him and obey his commandment. Another one says, Another one says, Bella, one me, my labour, do Tishole, 
Baiteni. So we are going to meet at the river. We will gather there. We will see the saints. We are going to see Father Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ezra, Nehemiah, Jonah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all those prophets that wrote wonders. We are going to see Moses. Are you not, are, you, are those things not intriguing you that, no, let me die and go. Let me die and be there. But the reason why you are afraid of death is because you are not sure of heaven. So, if you are coming across this world, you know that you are always scared of death. When they tell you about death or you dream about death, you are always scared, you are always afraid. Please, you need to go back and work out your salvation. I'm not joking. You need to work on your journey with God because it's a sign that you are not going to make heaven. That's just it. If you discover you, you have not lost your fear of death, it is because you are not going to make heaven. If you are going to make heaven, look at Stephen when they were stoning him and they are killing him. The Bible says he was happy when he saw the place he was going to. And he did what? He did what? He forgave the offenders even before his death. He's the only one that do like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. But Stephen says, God, do not count these sins unto them. Can you see? Because he saw where he's going and he was like, no, these people are helping me. If you two see where you are going to, and somebody says, you are going to die. I want to kill you. Then you will be happy and say, in fact, Kukuma Kimi, let me go. Assuming it is written in the Bible that any child of God that is tired of this world, do so so, -so prayer, do so so fasting, and then you will die. Ah, I am under the sure that no children of God will remain on earth. I'm not joking. Immediately they become a child of God, like they will just go and do that thing and die and go to heaven. But because we, are, we cannot do that, we cannot kill ourselves, we cannot poison ourselves. That is why we are still managing in this world of sin. It is not easy to be in this world as a child of God. Take it or you leave it. It is not easy to be in this world as a child of God. Because even Jesus Christ confirmed me that he's sending us like a sheep among wolves. Okay, tell me how possible is it that you will find it peaceful to be a sheep among wolves? What is wolf? Animals that kill and you know, uh, cannibal, cannibal. They, ca they are like cannibal, they are cannibal. A type of animal that eats bones, eat flesh. Now, and you are a sheep. That you are the food to what? You are their food. And then you are now in their midst. What is the meaning of that? That is, you are going to live among terrible peoples. People that will look at you high to high and tell you they love you. And the next minute they want to kill you. People that you will do good to them. And in return, they will pay you back with evil. And they will still stood by you and tell you you are foolish, you are stupid. These are the people you are living with. This is not the matter of your wife or your husband or your children or your family or your friends. No. Everybody around you can one at a point turn out to be your enemy. And that is why Christ says, be wise like a serpent and be gentle like a dove. So that by the time you find yourself in the midst of all these people, you will know how to navigate through their midst without offending God and without offending any man. It is possible. Work on your life and you see the Lord will bless you. Please, if you are blessed with this video, kindly share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. I remain MO on Life Bala. Don't be afraid of death. And if you are scared of death, do the needful so that you can overpower death. See you in my next video. God bless you. So surprise. Many are dying going to hell every night. So surprise. Many are weeping.